<sighs> well, hello, Albert. How did you sleep last night? Not very well. Oh, what happened? Well, I had a strange dream. Oh, I'm sorry to hear that. What was your dream about? Let me tell you. I saw a golden crown sitting on a pedestal. It was shining in the sunlight. I had this warm feeling, safe feeling. Everything was peaceful, but then the dream changed. There was a shadow that got bigger and bigger. It looked like someone's hand. It looked like it, was, it started to get dark, and I felt scared, and the shadow started to reach for the crown, but just, just before he could grab it, I woke up. Oh, wow, that is strange. Do you think it can mean anything? I don't know. Uh, why don't you head outside? I'm sure Sir laughs a lot as eager to get started on your second day of training. I I'm going to go speak with the king. Is everything all right? I, I pray so. Alrighty then. Hmm. <laughs> oh, hi, George. How are you today? <sighs> oh, good morning, El. Oh, good morning, Sir Lassola. I'm ready for a second day to train. Second <laughs> day of training. <laughs> Excellent. First, let's see what you remember. <laughs> Set that there. Well done, Albert. You've got the angles of attack down pat. I think it's time to move on to defense. It's important how to learn how to defend yourself in a fight so you don't end up like my friend. Uh, what happened to him? Oh, he was fighting a duel, and, well, the, the foe landed quite the low blow, left him defeated. Get it? Defeated? Defeated? Yes, yes, yeah. I got it. Yes. Okay, so it's defensive skills we're working on today, is it? <clears throat> That's right. The easiest defensive move in sword fighting is the simple step away. The easiest defense... What the heck? You want to step away from your opponent's attack. When, when your opponent brings their sword towards you, you can take a big step back to avoid their attack. Ready? Uh-huh. Like that? There you go. Like that. Now you try. Okay. Ooh. Great. Well done. This move will work best when your opponent is going for your body. But if they're very fast and skilled, they might try to jab you with their sword when you step back. So watch out. You don't want to get skewered. Yeah. Now, let's go back and forth and add a little movement. Follow my lead. Take it slow now. Ooh. Whoa. <laughs> How's that? Well done, Albert. You're a very fast learner. Well, thank you. Yes, well done, Albert. Now, if I might interrupt, I do have a question. What two pieces of armor does a knight wear to protect him from his enemy's attacks? Ooh. Ooh, can I answer it? I know this one. Oh, let, let Albert do this. Okay. Uh, their shield. That's right. That's the shield. And what is the other one? His helmet. <sighs> Good job. Yes, the shield and the helmet. Today you're learning about how to protect yourself in a sword fight by using good defense. A knight also wears a shield and helmet to protect his body in battle. In the same way, there are two pieces of spiritual armor that will protect you from Satan's attacks. The shield of faith and the helmet of salvation. When you become God's child, you belong to him. That doesn't mean that the enemy, Satan, won't try to tempt you. Because he wants you to sin and he wants you to give up. But you must learn to discern the truth from lies and not listen to him. Mm. Wow. Uh, question. What does discern mean? Ooh. 
Oh, I know this one too. Please, can I answer this one? Okay, go ahead. It's to tell the difference between a truth and a lie. That's right. Sometimes it can be difficult to discern what is true and what is not true. That is why the book of truth is so important. We can always look to God's word for answers. Hmm. Maybe I'll find my book of truth today. I wish I could keep looking with you, Albert, but I've got to get back to my own training with the other knights. Now you keep practicing, and I'll see you later. All righty. Thank you. I will. Thank you. <laughs> hmm. Bella, is everything all right? How did the meeting go with the king? Well, I was really troubled by the dream that you had, Albert, because I had a very similar dream. You know, I've been feeling uneasy lately, especially after hearing of your conversations with the Duchess. As an advisor to the king, it's my job to help look out for him. I thought I should go to him with my concerns. And what, did that, what exactly did he say? He said he is prayerfully considering it, and he's also praying all about these things. Um, and, and I am as well. The, I fear that the darkness in our dreams may represent a real danger. Um, well. Oh, well, good hello. morning. Hello there. Hello, George. How are you, boy? Don't worry, I didn't forget about you. Albert, I was thinking, I should give you a tour of the castle today. Would you like me to show you around? Yes, I would love that. Well, Bella, how would you feel about that? Uh, that's, that's good. Just take care, you both. These are uncertain times. Remember what you've learned, Albert. Don't worry, we'll be careful. All righty, see you later, Bella. Come on, Albert. All righty then. You've already seen the Great Hall. People come and go through here all the time. All those painting on the walls are important lords and ladies from the past. I like to imagine what their lives might have been like. See that lady? She has kind eyes, doesn't she? I always imagine she lived in the cottage in a forest and could speak to the animals. And when she married a lord and became a lady, she moved into castle with all 100 of her pets. Wow. Um, do you actually know what she was like, though? Um, she was known to be quite grumpy and was deathly allergic to animals. This way! Uh. Down this hall are portraits of my family. My father, my great-grandfather, my great-great-great-grandfather, my great-great-great-grandfather, my great-great-great-great-great... Great grandfather. And so on. Aunts and uncles and cousin. This is my cousin, once removed on my mother's side. Ah. Um, princess, um, where is your mother? Oh. Um, she's in heaven. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Thanks. It's okay. I really miss her, but I know she's in heaven. But with God. I know I'll get to see her someday. Mm. Well, down there are the servants' quarters and the kitchen. That's my favorite place in the castle. And out there are the stables. The throne room is over there. And up there are the royal chambers. Ah. And over there is the grand ballroom. Ah, how fun. And that's where the pillow fights happen, right? The pillow fights? <gasps> oh, yes, the pillow fights. Mm. Well, and here we are, back in the Great Hall. Well, thank you, Princess. Uh, the castle's really big. <laughs> it sure is. I've grown up here, and I can still get turned around sometimes. Mm. You know what else? The castle has secret tunnels. Ooh. I've heard about the secret chambers hidden somewhere deep below the castle. I imagine it must be so mysterious and exciting. I've explored some of the tunnels, but I've never found the secret chamber. Wow, um, th that's neat. What do you imagine would be down there, Albert? I don't know, maybe it's a secret hideout. Yes, for... Hmm. <gasps> for pirates! <laughs> I, don't, I don't know about that one. Now I know exactly what I'm going to make believe today. But first, 
breakfast. I haven't eaten yet, and I'm starving. Yes, and I better go find Bella. See you later, Albert. See ya. Hmm. Wow, a secret chamber. Sounds mysterious. Maybe it really is a secret hideout. A secret hideout of a thief? Maybe whoever took my book of truth hook it to the secret chambers. Mm. Oh, oh look, that. Albert, you're back. Ah, Bella, I have a question. Okay. Um, oh, I don't know how to ask this. Um, what was the queen like before she <laughs> died? Yeah. I did know her. I've known her from the time when she was young, before she married the king. Um, she was a very sweet young girl. And what was she like? Oh, she was a lot like the princess. Imaginative, fun-loving, and kind. <laughs> but she didn't quite have the wild imagination like the princess does. She was creative, and she liked to paint. She was quite good, yes. We all still miss her, but we know that we'll get to see her again. She was a child of God, and she's in heaven now with him. Well, Bella, I've been thinking a lot about what you told me, about God and his good kingdoms, and about the truth and, abs and his armor. Sorry, did not mean to stutter. This is nerve-wracking. I think you meant absolute truth. Yes. I don't want to be a part of his bad kingdom. I know I've sinned, I've lied, I've disobeyed my parents, and so much more. I've decided I want to be a part of God's good kingdom, Bella. <gasps> that is great news. Yes. What else? You also want to be saved? Do yes. You want to okay. Yes. And and admit to God that you're sorry from your sin? Yes. I know I'm separated from God because of my sin. I'm, I'm sorry for that sin, and I want to be saved from it. I want to be God's child, wear his armor, and be a good knight. I want to serve God and the king by standing for the truth. That is so good. I couldn't be happier to hear that. That is so awesome. Let's have a seat. Okay, so all you must do is pray to God. Just tell him what you just told me. Tell him that you're sorry for your sin, that you know that you need Jesus. Salvation is a free gift, one that you only need to ask for. Okay. Uh, um, dear Lord, thank you for my new friends. Bella, so last all at Princess Gwendolyn. Thank you for sending your son, Jesus, to die on the cross and that we could be a part of his good kingdom. Thank you that he rose again so we can wear his spiritual armor. Thank you for everything that you've done and please save me from the sins I have done. And please help me become a knight and please help me find my book of truth. Amen. And Jesus' name I pray, amen. Was that, was that good? That was great. I'm so happy. Well, thank you, Bella. I have to find the book of truth. I think I might know where to look. <laughs> Albert, wait. Where are you going? Huh? Yes! That's what this is all about. You know, you all have seen the world, you've been in the world, you see the world, and, and here for four days now, you've been learning about something going on in the world that, that you can't necessarily see all of. There, there are two kingdoms, right? Somebody tell me. Which two, what, are the, what are the two kingdoms? Yes, sir. The bad kingdom and the good kingdom. Next question. 
Which kingdom does everyone begin in? Okay, we, had, we already had an answer come out real quick. The bad kingdom, that's right. And so can someone tell me how a person will come out of the bad kingdom and into the good kingdom? Yes, ma'am. Yes. Amen. That is right. Give her a hand for a beautiful answer. How great is that? We, we come out of the bad kingdom and we come into the good kingdom by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ as, as our Savior. And then there are not only two kingdoms, there are two paths. There's a path for each kingdom. We, we see one to the left here, or one to the right here, my right. And the, to the left, and then we see another path. And though when you believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, you have a home in heaven, there's a path we're on in this life after we've believed on Jesus Christ. But you know what? There's an attack that's still taking place. There is the pull to this side, and there is the pull to this side, though there's a path that God has for us. Therefore, as children of God, we need protection in this life while we're on this path. And so we have the armor of God that we might be able to do. So we need the helmet of salvation. We need to wear the helmet of salvation. We need protection for our minds. When we start to move to one side or to the other, rather than on being the, on the path, that's because we're walking with an unprotected mind. And we need the helmet of salvation. How do we wear the helmet of salvation? How does it work? Well, when we're in the Word of God, when we're working for God, when we're worshiping God, there is protection for the mind. The Bible says, be not conformed. Everyone say conformed. conformed. Be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your what? Mind. By the renewing of your mind. Putting on the helmet of salvation so that, so that the Lord has our whole mind upon Him. And taking the shield of faith. What happens with the first act of faith? What happens to a person? It's already been said tonight. What, what is the first act of faith? To believe. To believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. And then we continue to live by faith. Because there are attacks that will cause us to doubt. And guess what God doesn't want? He does not want us doubting. He wants us to live by faith. Satan is the accuser. Satan is the liar. He's the one who's going to throw fiery darts. Trying to make us doubt trying to hurt us in our faith. So we take the shield of faith and we put on the helmet of salvation and we walk in the protection of God so that we can be on the path that He wants us on. He not only saves us, but He has provided everything we need to live a saved life. Isn't that good news tonight? Well, right now is going to be your opportunity. After three hours tonight... After 12 hours all week, we have been sharing the Word of God. And so in a time of invitation, we do so at a time like this. You don't have to raise your hand. You can just come forward to any counselor with any questions you have. We have been teaching the Bible. You have been hearing the Bible. And so whatever God is doing in your heart, you just come forward to your counselors. We're going to have a time of prayer, and this is a very important time to ask your questions about sin, maybe, temptation. 
what it really means to believe, faith. You may have questions about the Lord Jesus Christ. Going to heaven, who goes to hell and how, whatever is on your heart tonight. Maybe you want to pray for a family member. Maybe you want to pray for a friend. Maybe you know of someone here tonight who does not know Jesus as their Lord and Savior, and, and you don't need to mention them, but you, you just want to pray for them. This is your time. That's what this invitation is all about. So if we could all bow our ha heads to the Lord and have a word of prayer, counselors are going to come forward, and we're here for you tonight. God is letting us help you with answering the questions of the Bible that you have, the personal questions as they affect your lives. Let us pray. Father, we do bow before you again tonight. We thank you so much for your kindness, for your righteousness, Lord, for your armor, Lord, for the helmet of salvation and for the shield of faith. We thank you for the protection that they provide. You know we need it in this life. You know we're going to be attacked by the bad kingdom even after we come into your kingdom. And so we thank you for loving us so much and caring for your children so much that you provide us with what we need so we can walk on the path that you want us on to be blessed and to work in the things of you. We love you tonight. We thank you for first loving us I thank you that we know that you love every child here. We thank you for truth tonight, Lord, and for the way you affect all of our hearts. And so have your way in all of our lives tonight. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. If you want to go ahead and stand.